the summit as today Roy Foreman Promotions in association with the summit and Cedric Kushner Productions proudly presents an afternoon of world championship boxing for your entertainment. Let's get things started with a four round junior welterweight contest in the ring at this time. The man in charge of today's opening bout, he is referee Ronnie Ralston. And now introducing the principals first, he's boxing out of the blue corner. This young man wearing the white satin trunks with the blue trim weighed in at 143 and one quarter pounds. With a professional record of 12 wins, eight defeats, and four KOs from Columbus, Indiana, let's welcome the pretty boy, Hector Ramirez. Ramirez. And his opponent, he's boxing out of the red corner. This young man wearing the solid black trunks, weighing in at 143 and one quarter pounds. He's undefeated as a professional with three straight wins. Two of those three wins coming by knockout a former Junior Olympic National Champion from right here in Houston, Texas. Let's have a warm summit welcome for the ever popular Joel Perez. Perez, four rounds of boxing in the Junior Welterweight Division, your referee Ronnie Ralston. Gentlemen, you need to be given your instructions in the dressing room, protect yourself at all times. I want a good clean fight, touch gloves, good luck to you. Well, a good look at Joel Perez and the Texas rules that'll govern this uh, fight. It'll be featuring the junior welterweights. Three knockdown rule in effect. Mandatory eight count. Ten point must system with the three judges scoring. The referee does not figure. And, of course, they'll go to the scorecards in case of an accidental butt or cut after the third round. And you cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Joel Perez against Hector Romatas. And Perez coming in the black trunks. And, uh, Charles, I guess one of the things everybody in Houston uh, really wanted to see as well uh, this junior welterweight, Perez, reacts under a very good challenge from Hector Ramirez today. Well, Ramirez has a big edge in pro experience, but it's a real contrast in terms of styles and in terms of amateur experience between the two. Ramirez learned his trade the hard way. He had no amateur fights. He learned it in gyms and in professional fights, while Perez had a lot of amateur bouts, over 200 of them. He was an eight-time Houston Golden Glove champion and a runner-up in the National Golden Glove and a Junior Olympic National Champion. There you see how Ramirez comes in. He'll be winging punches. He'll be coming straight as opponent. Nothing fancy you're going to see from Hector Ramirez in this one. Ramirez walked into the gym of uh, Jim Loniker and asked to have a tryout. He punched some bags. They liked him. They asked him not to fight amateur until they turned him as a pro, which they did in 86. And now you can see that ever-present uh, prodding style that he'll have today against Perez. That high arching left hand. You see him going quickly to the body here with accommodations. Retaliation uppercut that time by Ramirez slipped in. Ramirez originally is from Hermosa, Old Mexico, living in Columbus, Indiana now. And it appears, Charles, that the one thing he'd like to do is just wing a big right hand to get uh, Perez on his heels. And Ramirez really is a quick starter. One of the things that gave uh, Loniker encouragement at the beginning was in one of the early fights, Ramirez knocked out Bobby Moore in one round. Moore was a five-time Indiana Golden Glove champion who was undefeated as a pro. Right uppercut just caught right off the forehead that time of Ramirez and literally backed him up, and you see him back on the ropes as he's trying to let Perez punch out here in this first round. Well, yeah, this is one of the positions that Ramirez doesn't want to be in, one where he's got to fight off the ropes and where he's backing up. Of course, he's more effective coming forward. Perez with that great amateur record, three as a professional, one of all, two of those by a knockout. He likes to be, of course, the boxer puncher more than to come out and throw the big punches, but he's being forced to wade in and throw as much as he can against Ramirez in the first round. And right now holding his wand in this little war that's going on. This is a good test for Perez's stamina, and he better not punch himself out early. Ramirez went the full 10 rounds with world-rated John Duplessis in his last fight. So this is a guy who can go to the distance and who can take a punch. Duplessis nailed him a lot in that fight, but Ramirez did not go down. Closing 30 seconds of round number one. These are junior welterweights. In the black, it's Joel Perez of Houston. And from Columbus, Indiana, is Hector Ramirez. And this has been the posture of this fight throughout most of the afternoon with Perez backing Ramirez onto the rope and Ramirez taking a lot of punches. And now Ronnie Ralston asking both of the fighters to keep their punches up as we head for the end of round one.
Well, a solid first round by Joel Perez, the young 21-year-old from Houston, Texas, did exactly what the fight would allow him to do against Ramirez. I thought Charles Ramirez came out and said, okay, I'm going to test him early, and he found out this kid from Houston can retaliate and fight back pretty well. And the encouraging thing about Perez, he's not headhunting, he's going to the body a lot, and Ramirez is allowing him to do so. He's a stationary target. As we mentioned at the top uh, of the fight, you're not going to see a lot of movement from Ramirez. So uh, he is uh, going to be there to be hit and uh, to be hit to the body. And uh, Perez will slow him down with some of those body shots, although we don't expect a lot of the side-to-side -side movement. Let's take a look at some of the action from the first round. Ramirez with a borderline shot there, countered with the uh, left hook by Perez as he dropped his right hand. And then, of course, Perez with a pretty good arsenal of punches, the uppercuts and the right hands, and then later on with some of the body work. Round two, scheduled for four rounds, junior welterweights. In the black is Joel Perez of Houston and Hector Ramirez out of Columbus, oh, Indiana. And uh, so far, the first round, Perez came out, countered well on an early attack by Ramirez. And now they fight in the middle of the ring. It'll be interesting, Charles, to see if Ramirez goes back to the ropes. And he quickly answered that question uh, about 10 seconds into the round. And as we mentioned, it's really uncharacteristic of Ramirez. And one of the things that Perez is going to have to look out for is Ramirez is warned for low blows. We saw one of those uh, in the replay. But Ramirez is going to be winging punches from all angles. So it's not something conventional that Perez is going to be seeing here today. One of the things both camps were talking about that they didn't have to look for the other guy because both fighters will definitely like to come to you. In this situation, it's been Perez, but to start the fight, Ramirez was the one that made the charge. Perez setting down, and you can see the uppercut slipping in. Ramirez tries to throw one of his own. The key here is that Perez is a much better fighter on the inside than Ramirez is. And you see those nice short uppercuts that he's throwing, and so far those have been uh, his best punches of the fight. Well, if you ever walked into the Main Street Boxing Gym here in Houston and watched uh, Perez work on the heavy bag, that's what he's suddenly having to do. You see him on the ropes, almost similar and uh, looking almost like working the heavy bag as he throws punches on Ramirez. Got off the ropes a little quicker that time and tries to throw some punches of his own, but the pretty boy is getting nicked up pretty good here by Perez. Good break for Perez is that Ramirez, when he throws those punches, he's more or less slapping with them. Uh, Perez, uh, you see, has much better form throwing punches. He's getting leverage behind them, while Ramirez is throwing basically arm punches at him. Keep in mind now that referee Ronnie Ralston has warned Ramirez of any low punches. And, of course, Ramirez was talking about how high the uh, trunks were being worn by Perez. That fell on deaf ears, though. So we'll wait and see if there is a point deduction here for Ramirez before this four-rounder is over. He's a little leery of throwing anything to the, to the belt buckle right now. And now a warning to Ramirez for using the elbow. So Ronnie Ralston has thrown all of the warnings yeah. to Ramirez. Let's see how he reacts. And now he tries to put Perez on the ropes for a little shot or two. And the difference there is that Perez knows how to spin out. Ramirez doesn't even bother when he's against the ropes. Eight, nine, ten punches thrown by Perez without an answer from Ramirez. Closing seconds of round number two. It has been another solid round for the youngster out of Houston. Over 200 amateur fights, eight times he won the Houston Golden Gloves Championship, the Junior Olympic Championship, and was a runner-up in this past year's Golden Gloves. So he has talent to burn, and he's showing it here through round two. Well, a rather uh, quieting down Hector Ramirez. Talked to him in the dressing room. He was rather somber in the dressing room as well, and it's carried right over here as Jim Loniker working in his corner with him. And there's not really much you can say other than you just got to try to stay in the middle ring and maybe try to get off first on Perez, but that's a very difficult chore in trying to outduel Joel Perez as you see him across the way. By the way, that is Jesse Reed Jr. working on the right eye, and Jesse Reed, the trainer working in the corner here with Joel Perez. Now here Ramirez is in the corner. You notice he doesn't even bother to spin out or move out of the corner. He's letting Perez just to tee off on him. And you see those effective body shots, which may be one of the reasons uh, Ramirez hasn't been able to exhibit much movement in the fight. Perez doesn't go haywire. He picks his shots, he stands back, and he sets himself. And uh, that's one of the, the marks of a good young fighter.
Joel Perez uses all of the 60 second rest between the second and third rounds as he comes off the stool to meet Hector Ramirez in the center of the ring in our third round of the scheduled four round junior welterweight bout. No doubt about it on the cards uh, Charles it looks like it's been a very good afternoon so far for Joel Perez a solid first two rounds for him. He gets the first two rounds real big on my scorecard although you can't call them 10 8 rounds they have been rather dominant rounds for Perez he's really carried the action he's done exactly what he wants to do and he's prevented Ramirez from doing anything and see how he's following up with combinations and stepping back and <laughs> there's one of the wild punches I was telling you about that Ramirez will throw from time to time he did a full pirouette on that one Ramirez 27 year old youngster from Columbus Indiana originally from old Mexico and only 21 years of age is Perez. Watch how quickly Perez is able to step side to side and throw angles on Ramirez. If he didn't have enough trouble right up the middle against Perez, he's now getting shots left and right. And a guy like Ramirez will have trouble with someone who can move like Perez. In, in the fight with Duplessis, it was almost impossible for Ramirez to hit Duplessis beyond the third or fourth round. And it became uh, basically a chase where Ramirez was losing. Ramirez still digging those uppercuts up underneath on Perez. He's taken some pretty good shots under there. But you can see the posture of the fight as this time Ramirez rolls from one rope to the other, throws a pretty good left hook that caught. But Perez is definitely out punching him at least four, five, six to one here as he has throughout most of the last two rounds. Uh, Charles Ramirez almost throws one punch but is unable to do much behind it. Yeah, the, there's, there are no effective countering punches when he's on the ropes. Uh, when you go to the ropes and you go on purpose to the ropes, as it appears that Ramirez is doing, maybe to catch a little breath, uh, you've got to have some kind of strategy. Now, while Perez is throwing punches, Ramirez ought to be planning some sort of a counter, but Perez is able to throw two or three shots and get out of there, and Ramirez uh, isn't able to throw anything in retaliation. Good straight right hand that time thrown by Perez. Again, the young man in the black facing you on the camera here on our World Championship Boxing from the Summit in Houston. Sam Smith along with Charles J. We're glad you could join us today as these junior welterweights put on the show. And Perez at 3-0 and is one that a lot of people are buzzing about around Houston, Texas, and now I think we can see why. A very active fighter, good crisp punches, and has got tremendous quickness. Ramirez just stalking here in the final 10 seconds of round number three. As Perez has done in the first two rounds, he has dominated so far. So a great overhead view as you see at that center ring, our Corona Extra logo on a canvas here at the summit. By the way, Charles J. volunteered to go up and put that camera up here, didn't you? <laughs> no way, huh? <laughs> I'm afraid of heights. Great shot up above here as we take a look at between rounds, between the third and fourth rounds of this scheduled four-rounder, the junior welterweights. And you look quickly at uh, Joel Perez across the way. Joel fighting out of Houston, Texas. His uh, cousin, by the way, Jerry Perez out of uh, Rosenberg, Texas, is also on the same card. And a kind of a fighting family is Gina Perez, who is a female uh, boxer, is Jerry's sister, and she too is watching the action here today at the summit. So definitely a family affair on the Perez's here in Texas. Ramirez has used all of his 60 seconds of rest between rounds. He's taken a beating. Let's see what he can do in the fourth round. Round four, touch of the gloves, Ramirez in the white, Perez in the black, as this is the final round of this junior welterweight tussle. As Joel Perez, the undefeated uh, Houston fighter, in the black has done extremely well. Ramirez came out like a house of fire, Charles, in the first round. First 15 or 20 seconds, you'd think it would be all him, but Perez was able to counter very well, as you see, backs him to the ropes again quickly. And I believe he hurt Ramirez with a right hand. This time, the Ramirez indicates that a blow may have come low. At least that was the indication. And Ronnie Ralston says, hey, that's it. You've taken 15, 20 shots in a row without answering. And despite the fact that one of the blows might have slipped low, Ronnie Ralston has stopped the fight, and it's a TKO in the fourth round. That was a little bit questionable, Sam. Ramirez got hit low, and then he was uh, bending over. And I, I think what he wanted the referee to do was give him a minute or so to uh, 
gather himself, but instead uh, the referee, who I don't think really had a good view of that punch, just stepped in and stopped it. Let, let's take a look at it. A left hook, the right hand. Here's a left hook coming right in the belt line of Ramirez. As we'll see it right. No, he never, never hit him. Let's no, I think it's does. coming up here, right there. And that was a low blow, and you see Ramirez buckling. Another angle at it. And it certainly was low. And you see Ramirez in the reaction, and I think the referee uh, thought it was a body shot and stepped in and, and, and stopped it there. You can see after Ramirez had already started to bend over on the side, Perez continued to pound away. Yeah, there it was, and you see the referee jumping right in there. Now, there's no question that he thought Ramirez was hurt by a body shot. So Perez, with the stoppage of the fight here in the fourth round, gets his third by a knockout and his fourth victory overall. And after that very successful amateur career, which included over 200 fights, he comes up with a very successful start of his uh, action in here in Houston. And he did it the hard way. He had to come almost from behind. In the first round, it was Ramirez early on, and then Perez completely took the fight away from him and continued to dominate all the way through the last part of the fight. They're officially getting the time of the stoppage of the fight, and Gordon Wood, our ring announcer, has the official time. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of 34 seconds of the fourth and final round. Referee Ronnie Lawson calls a halt to this contest. The winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, 